Hey guys, uh, this is that SLP here. Uh, you know, I actually thought that um, naming myself a certain thing would cause me to um, limit myself to what kind of games I could let's play. But, you know, seeing as how the NES library is just so big, um, I found an adventure game that I hope you guys like. Well, as you can tell, it's King's Quest V for the NES. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, how I'm going to be doing this, uh, it's going to be in the same vein as, you know, like, Crabbiness, Late Blade, Rizalka, um, all the other YouTube Sierra gamers. Um, if I missed some of you, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be doing the same vein as them. So, I hope you all enjoy. Um, yeah, I've never played this game, no. Sad looking Daventry. He's he's doing something there. It looks like looks like he's just attacking it with vines or something. I know that's not what he's doing, but either lightning or uh, you know, like I said, thorns of vines. You know, I actually like this version of the game. That's also just for the fact of um, I never played the PC version. I've only seen let's plays of them. And in walks in our hero, King Graham. I thought he was picking up a turnip for some reason. I mean, I know he's, like, picking up a flower and smelling it, but... Oh, well. What the... Oh! My castle! I can tell you what happened! I'm not attempting to do Cedric's annoying voice. No. What? I know what happened to your castle. I saw it all. Yes, I did. You did? Well, then, what happened? It was the powerful and evil wizard Mordak who did it. I just happened to be visiting with an old friend when I saw him materialize out of thin air. Thank goodness he didn't notice me. Don't stop now. Go on. He caused a dark cloud to descend from the sky and to envelop the entire castle. Then he commanded the cloud to rise again, and as it did, it took the castle with him. Oh, it was a sight to see, all right. Why? Why would this wizard Mordak want my castle? What could he have against me and my family? That I don't know. I only know that it was Mordak who took your castle. And your family. Perhaps I can help you. My employer also happens to be a wizard, which is why I recognize Mordak. Unlike Mordak, though, my employer is a very good wizard. His name is Crispinifer, but we all call him Crispin for short. The only problem is, you see... Ahem. <clears throat> the only problem is that Crispin is getting on in years and tends to be a bit forgetful. I don't know, this doesn't sound as if it would work. Well, it probably won't work, you know, when you being King Graham and all, you have to do everything yourself. Oh, sure it would! Crispin is a very qualified wizard, one of the best. He just gets a little forgetful now and then, that's all. Now, where is it? I know I brought it with me. Aha! Here it is. What is that? Well, it is my opinion that you don't stand a chance against the likes of Mordak. Excuse me for saying, Your Majesty, but you don't have a chance. Have a choice. You must come with me. I'm sure Crispin will help, can help you. Yay, and we get sprinkled with fairy dust. Huzzah. What is that stuff? Oh, just some leftover fairy dust I've been carrying around. It'll help you fly. You can follow me to the land of Serenia, where Crispin and I live. It's much too far to walk, you know. I think the fairy dust is still good. Come on, up here. Follow me! And yes, um, I'm actually playing this game for my actual Nintendo, so, uh... I probably, uh, if I die, I'm resorting to passwords, so this is a no-death run for the most part. I might show a couple of deaths that I think are funny early on, but, like, when I'm in Mordak's castle, uh, you can bet your butt I'm not gonna be dying at all. In fact, um, I'm probably gonna be printing out a map of some of the later places, because... I know this game, but I don't know it that well. There it is, down here! Come on! Okay, here I come! Splash. <laughs> Cedric, where have you been? I've been calling for you. A bit clumsy, are you? Well, come on in the house and dry off. No sense sitting around like a wet dog. Cedric, go on in the house and pour each of us a nice hot cup of tea. Even though I don't know how owls would do that, they don't have thumbs, or arms, or... Do they? I don't know, are wings really considered their arms? Whatever. 
Hi, hi, Crispin. Yeah, that's gonna be my Crispin voice, just a little higher up. I like this music for this part, it's really calming. The Society of Wizards has always taken a dim view of Mordak and his abuse and his power. Why, he's even been put on suspension a few times. Never seems to do any good, though. Crispin, why would Mordak want to take my family or my castle? What did we ever do to him? I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. Mordak is a very unpredictable wizard. I've never understood that evil mind of his. I just break his lawn, you idiot. I thought you could help His Majesty Crispin. That's why I brought him here. Well, let me see now. I used to be a very powerful wizard at one time, you know. But I've gotten a little rusty lately. A little rusty? That's quite enough from you, Cedric. Yes, sir, Crispin, sir. I don't know what I have that would be of much use to you. Most of my wizard stuff is pretty old and worn out. But let me see what I can find. And walk, walk, walk. No, that won't do. That's all used up. Aha! Hmm. It might work. Come here, my son. Eat it up. And, uh, What is that? I was about to say, what is it, but... Uh, Graham stole the words out of my mouth. It's an old piece of magical white snake I had left over from last year. With it, you'll be able to communicate with the natural and animal world. You could find that quite helpful, even though there's like three things you can... Excuse me. There's only like three things in this game you can actually talk to that's animal or human, or animal, whatever, plant. Here's my old wand. I don't even know if it works anymore. Most of its power may be gone. But you know that wands are like pets. They've got to get to know you before they'll work for you. Just treat it with care and respect, and hopefully it will do something for you. Uh, well, looks like nothing right now, but whatever. You better get going, my boy. No telling what that confounded Mordak will do to you, I think you say. You go with him, Cedric. Show him the way. M me Yes, you. Don't be such a coward. Now go on. You'd better get started. And don't be wasting your time coming in here. I'm not going to be here for a little while. There's an emergency I have to tend to in a neighboring land. I'll try to keep an eye out for you, but... This is something you and Cedric are going to have to do yourselves. I wish you the best, King Graham. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all you've done for me. And we leave. I suggest we visit the town first. How about it, Your Majesty? Please, call me your ma- Please don't call me your majesty, Cedric. It's much too formal. I'd like it if you just call me Graham. I'd be delighted- I'd, I'd be delighted to, Graham. Anyway, um, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the town. You might be able to find some supplies there. It's just over a little hill to the south, not too far. All right, well, let's go. And, um, as you can see, we get to use the D-pad to move around and spin crazily like that. Well, let's look around at where we are. If I can- there we go. Let's see. The hand-hewn wooden door is recessed within a small porch. Well, let's look at his house, though. Thick paned windows adorn the small house. It is difficult to see through them, even though it looks like it's just pixeled on, but whatever. We can't look at his house. Chimney? Nope. Uh, let's see, where am I? Uh, I can't even see where we are. Whatever. Let's look at Cedric, then. Cedric waits impatiently for Graham. Let's see. An unusual ornament decorates Crispin's front yard. Crispin being a wizard, it must have some magical significance which Graham could never understand. Uh, well, let's see if we can touch it. This is Crispin's universe interpretator. In this is Crispin's universe interpretator. Be careful, you might accidentally realign the stars. But that's okay, we just won't be able to find the constellations. Well, I don't think there's anything else we can do up here apart from this. We can drink some water. The cool pond water quenches Graham's thirst. All right. Well, he said, you know, go south to town first. Let's go. Watch out, Graham! A poisonous snake. I'm not even going to try to do that. Well, let's see. Let's look at this poisonous snake. A large venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. Well, if Cedric just said it's a poisonous, why is it saying whatever? Venomous here. Okay. Let's see. Let's try and talk to him. I know it doesn't work, but let's try. The snake looks at Graham with cold eyes, but doesn't answer. Let's touch it! The snake has a menacing loach, which Graham should heed. Alright, well, let's walk up to him. Yay! Oh! 
Aw, oh, damn. Watch for those critters, Graham. Okay. Well, I guess since we died... Oh, thank you guys for watching this King's Quest V Let's Play. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're gonna just restart. That's why I, I uh, did that, because it's the first thing. Um, yeah, let's just uh, look around this screen. I don't think we can actually even see what's going on here. A worn dirt path wanders through a thick wood aligned with the sounds of many alive with the sound of many creatures. Between the trees to the east, Graham can see the outline of a great mountain range, which is this way, which I don't know if we can look. No. Or look at the path. Yeah, that's all we get from it. Now let's just go down. And here's the town. I actually kinda like the design of the town. The quaint little town nestles at the base of a great snow capped mountain range which rises sharply to the east. Um, I'm guessing right here this is the mountain. And we can't look at it. Let's see, what does the sign say? Uh, I think it's all just going to stay the same. All right. The door is securely pad locked with a heavy padlock and can never be opened. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see, the door is severely locked and can never be opened. Well, I'm going to try. Mm. Damn it, I will try. Uh, uh, get in there. Ah, oh, damn, it's not working. Whatever. Let's just go into town. If you go into town, I'll wait for you here. I had a nasty run-in with a dog once, and I'd feel safer out here. I bet you would, Cedric. I love that. I love this lovely town music. Quaint houses and cute shops line the town's main cobblestone street. Okay. Oh, well, hello, lady. Let's look at you. The town is busy with people going about their daily chores. Uh, looks like a lady just meandering around. I bet she's the local drunk. Blocking an alleyway, a frustrated man fixes a broken wheel on his wagon. Let's talk to him. How goes it with you, good fellow? Not well, I'm afraid. This old wagon's always giving me trouble. Can I help you in any way? Thank you kindly, but I think I can handle it. Alright then, good luck. Thanks. With this wagon, I'm gonna need it. And that's all we can talk to him about. Let's see, there's something here. Graham notices an old wooden barrel outside the toy shop. Wait. Wait, the, it said the toy shop, right? A, thank you. Outside the, to the toy shop's over here, though. A cute toy shop runs the town. So I, I never noticed that. I never look at it that thing, though. Whatever. Uh, we need to look inside the barrel. Inside the old barrel, Graham notices an old fish. So, of course, let's pick it up and put it in our pocket. Okay, um, what you want to do, well, you can walk around crazily if you'd like, but, uh, you just want to go into one of the stores, and just leave. May I help you, sir? Yeah, well, you can help me by leaving. And you just come back out, and, uh, get this little lovely little coin. Uh, I'll, well, I'll look at it. Graham notices a shiny silver coin lying forgotten on the street, because Graham's ADD is picking in, and everything shiny we must pick up. Bending down, Graham quickly retrieves his retrieves the silver coin from the street. Alright, and we have a silver coin. Huzzah. Let's see, what is this place? I know what it is, but I want to look at it. With a fine view of the rushing of the rushing river, the bakehouse sits a bit out, uh, sits a bit out of town along an old ro rutted road. This is a road? Okay, whatever. We can go in here right now. Oh, well, let's let's just go on in. Why not? It'll be fun. I'll wait for you here. I'll I'll wait for you out here, Graham. Wow, and I can't read Cedric's line to save my life. We have a lovely little bakery, which I noticed in Let's Play. There's a lovely little scene that's really annoying about a mom and a kid buying a pie. That's not here. Let's let's just look around. Hmm, the wonderful smells of the bake ho of the bakehouse set Graham's stomach to rumbling and his mouth to watering. Was he entering a race or something? Okay. The baker's brother seemed to have a pet, a large mangy cat. That's actually a very small cat, well, but by NES standards, whatever. The baker, a large sturdy fellow, waits for customers behind a pie-covered counter. And in the kitchen of the bakehouse, Graham can see another big burly man doing the day's baking. So let's talk to this guy. Well, let's talk to them back here. I know we can't, but whatever. The baker's brother is too busy to chat with Graham. The cat doesn't appear to like Graham, much less answer him. Whatever. Fine, I'll talk to you. 
Everything looks so delicious, it's hard to decide what to buy. <laughs> Everybody has that problem, but what a problem to have. Those custard pies look awfully good. Yes, they are made from a recipe handed down from our dear mamma, and her mamma before her. Hmm, it's still hard to decide, though. Well, take your time. There's no hurry. And of course you want to buy it, so you just use the shiny silver coin that, you know, Graham's ADD has kicked in, so you give this shiny coin to him. Oh, sir, I'd like to buy a pie. The pies cost one silver coin each. I've got it right here. Here you go. I hope you enjoy your custard pie. Oh, I'm sure I will. And we place it in our pocket, and presumably it doesn't get, uh, get contaminated by this rotting fish, and uh, the wand doesn't poke into it. So let's just go. We're done here. Well, we're done on this screen for a little while. Stay away from this north end. You can look at it, but stay away from it for now. Just a rutted road... Just off a rutted dirt road, a country inn overlooks the picturesque rushing river. Well, the river doesn't look that rushing, but whatever. The brisk river rushes swiftly by the quaint country inn. Jeez, stuff's written in, like, tongue-tied. <sighs> whatever language it is. A large haystack dominates the area in front of the barn. And that's really all you need to look at in this screen. There's nothing else. Let's just go up. Yay! Let's, let's look at this guy. In front of his house, a young gnome happily plays with an exquisite marionette. Let's look at this house. Utilizing fallen logs, a gnome has built himself a little forest home. An old grandfather gnome sits con contentedly in his rocking chair. He watches his grandson at play. That doesn't really look like he's just sitting on a log, looks like. Or brick, I guess that's what. Whatever, let's talk to him. I actually like the, uh, the music for this, uh, screen. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing here? Don't you know this is private property? Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you. I was just noticing your son's marionette. It's very interesting. Where did you get it? It's grandson, not son. And I made it for him. Why'd you care? I just wanted to comment on its arti ar artistry. It's very well done. I don't suppose it could be bought. If it could, the price would be too steep. I reckon you would, couldn't afford it. Now leave me and my grandson be. Okay, well, let's leave him be. 